students. Applications are now available as of today. So students, please go online to complete the form. Spring is near and what better way to bring in the season with a few new fitness routines. The Wellness Ministry supports the Totally Fit program, which offers several weekly exercise classes that will help you in your fitness journey. These exercises include Zumba Tuesdays, which are free weekly classes held in the Family Life Center from 6 to 7 p.m. There's also pickleball, which is a sport that combines elements of tennis, badminton, and table tennis, and it's played between two or four players using paddles. This is a fast-paced and fun way to exercise for people of different ages and abilities. Pickleball is a weekly free event occurring Thursdays afternoon from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. And lastly, there's line dancing, which is an excellent option for exercise. These classes are held on Thursdays beginning at 4.45 p.m. What a wonderful word on Wednesday we received this past week. In case you missed it, our noonday Bible study with Pastor Reese continued the discussion on ways of dealing with pain, turning the negative into positive. We're reading from the second Corinthians and reflecting on Paul's letter of self-reflection during his trials and tribulations. In case you missed it, the recording is now up and running and available across all St. Paul Sacramento social media platforms. Okay, women of St. Paul, please join us for an event for all women to create a prayer vision board. We will have special guest facilitator, Sister Erica Houston from City Church of Sacramento, who is a delightful and spirit-filled woman of God. Please register and purchase tickets today. Registration is $10 per person and will be held on Saturday, March 9th, beginning at 9 a.m. If you cannot register using the QR code, please email women at stpaulsac.org. Today is the last day for in-person registration at the church. Ladies, let us ignite, enhance our prayer life together. I'm Sister Angelique Anderson. Hi, I'm Sister Sonia Kennedy. Hi, I'm Sister Felicia Bissett. Hey, I'm Minister Brandon Hairston and we are the St. Paul Kids Choir Leaders. We have a special presentation coming on Sunday, March 17th for our 76th church anniversary. Our St. Paul Kids Choir will be featured as the guest choir for our church anniversary service. Rehearsal dates and times will be listed on the screen. We're looking forward to working with our children from pre-K through the eighth grade for this wonderful celebration. We'll see you soon. Are you ready? Yeah! One, two, three. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Lord, the Bible tells me so. Clap it up! Hey! All right, saints. Our children's ministry will debut during the church anniversary service on Sunday, March 17th. We are requesting all children to come out and participate. Upcoming rehearsals have been scheduled with the initial slated as a virtual meeting and it is scheduled for March 5th at 6.30 p.m. The second rehearsal is on March 10th and will be held during service. And the final rehearsal is scheduled for March 17th at 6.15 p.m. in the St. Paul Sanctuary. For more information, please reach out to either Sister Sonia Kennedy, Dr. Angelique Anderson, Sister Felicia Besant, or Minister Brandon Hairston. Remember saints, it takes a village and we can't do this alone. We are asking for parent volunteers for child supervision at rehearsals and during the event Sunday, March 17th. Resurrection Sunday. Come worship with us on Sunday, March 31st, 2024. We will have a children's program beginning at 9 a.m. 
followed by worship service beginning at 10. During service, we will have a Resurrection Fun Day for children in the Family Life Center. So please come as you are. Attention Saints, please join us for a rejuvenating wellness weekend here at St. Paul Church. It's dedicated to nurturing the mind, body, and spirit of our members and their families. Save the date for Saturday and Sunday, April 20th and 21st, 2024. Saturday event highlights consist of a St. Paul Church walkathon starting at 9 a.m. You can walk, jog, or stroll your way up to three miles, which equates to 12 laps around the St. Paul parking lot, all for a great cause. And guess what? The $1 per lap pledge or even a flat donation all goes towards the St. Paul Scholarship Funds. And here's the kicker. We will have teams with two options to choose as your team captain. First Lady Lisa Reese, Team LR, or Pastor Kenneth Reese, Team KR. Let the friendly competition begin. But that's not it. After the walkathon, indulge in delicious food and enjoy fun activities for all ages with a bounce house and a game truck for the kids and youth, on-site vendors providing valuable information, including health screenings, nutrition, and fitness clinics, which will be Zumba, pickleball, and step and get fit line dancing, and totally fit life. Day two is on Sunday, April 21st. So get ready to worship in your workout attire from 9 a.m. to 12 noon for a special service focused on wellness called Fit to Serve. Scripture coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. So come and engage with inspiring guest speakers and embrace the connection between physical and spiritual health. Don't miss out on this uplifting weekend of wellness and community fellowship. See you there for St. Paul Church Wellness Weekend. St. Paul's Chess Club is actively recruiting members to join. Whether you're a novice or an expert, the Chess Club wants you. By joining the club, members will have the opportunity to participate in friendly yet competitive matches, sharpen their critical and strategic thinking skills, and the opportunity to connect with other fellow chess players. The AV Ministry Initiative Meet the Ministries has a new episode up and running. And this time I had the pleasure of meeting and interviewing Deacon Ron Marshall, chairman of the New Joy 911 Ministry. Deacon Marshall shared with much compassion all about the ministry's purpose and goal. This interview was spectacular, so please don't miss it. It is up and running across all St. Paul Sacramento Church social media platforms. Are you ready for St. Paul's 76th anniversary? As we build a legacy of faith and celebrate our momentous journey, featuring our joy-inspiring kids' choir, Pastor Horatio Jones's message of hope. You are not the victim. God has given you a reprise. Yes, Fun zones for kids, youths, and adults. Flavors to savor. Cater delights for all ages. Gospel sounds from a live DJ. Get your photos captured at our spinning photo booth. March 17th at 10 a.m. Dress comfortably. Come early and let Facebook Live know what St. Paul means to you. All donations go to our scholarship fund. We invest in our youth. St. Paul's 76th anniversary. At St. Paul, we build a legacy of faith. That's a wrap, Saints. This is Sister Christine Johnson bringing you the newest in St. Paul news. Stay blessed. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. We just uh, want to welcome everyone here in the sanctuary and those that's visiting with us uh, uh, on uh, St. Paul 2.0. And we just want to welcome our special guests, those first time visitors, whether here in the sanctuary or on our uh, media broadcast. Uh, everyone stand uh, for our scripture reading. 
Our scripture will be coming from uh, Psalm 67. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that you that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For the judge, you are the judge of the people with equality, equity, and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. The earth has yielded her increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Let us bow. God, our Father, we come thanking you, Lord, for another first Sunday morning in the month of March, Lord. We thank you for blessing us and carrying us through another week, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to assemble ourselves together to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. Lord, we praise you for your good works. Lord, we praise you because you are a God that never fails us. Lord, we want to lift you up. We want to glorify you. We want to praise your holy and righteous name. Let all the church say, praise God. And this is your call to worship. Amen. Go up. Healing comes, down. Healing comes down. Can you sing that with a St. Paul one? Praises. Let's tell them this. 
this. Thank you, Jesus. He's been so good. He's been so kind. I can't thank him enough. Come on, hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. If you come to praise him, will you clap your hands? Give God a hallelujah. Give him a thank you, Jesus. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Faithful is our God. If you know he's faithful, say God is faithful.
is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice. I said we ought to rejoice. Re means we've done it already. So when we come here on Sunday, it's just a repeat from what we've been doing all week long anyway. David say, I will bless the Lord at all times in his praise. I said his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I woke up this morning with my mind and it was stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning and I thank God for waking me up. I woke up and I looked in my closet and I got to pick which black suit I wanted to wear. That's a blessing. Ah, yeah. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Mighty God, we serve. Amen. Amen. It is, it is good to be in the house of the Lord again. Grateful to be here. Amen. Anybody rejoicing today? Amen. Listen, right where you are, just, just turn and wave at somebody. Amen. Tell him it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Oh, grateful, grateful, grateful. Amen. Grateful. Listen, beloved, it is one of our days that we set aside to honor one of the ordinances of the church and that is what we call Holy Communion and you should have already received your cup and uh, your bread as we prepare our hearts yes. we know that Holy Communion and if you don't have it your deacons are in the aisles now we know that communion is a time of remembrance, knowing that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it, asked his father to bless it, have his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the fruit of the vine, poured it, asked his father to bless it, gave to his disciples and said, this is my blood that is shed for the remission of sins. We know that communion is a time where we set aside to remember what Christ did for us on Calvary. He hung, he bled and died, and the Bible declares that he was beaten beyond recognition, and he did all of that because he loved us. And so we set this time aside so that we might remember. Also, it's a time of... Uh, repentance. The Bible declares that um, Paul told the church at Corinth that a man ought to examine himself and self-examination is always good for the soul. That when we look at our life and we see where we are in Christ and we see um, where in areas of our life we fell short, the Bible says that we can confess our sins and God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's a time of repentance, time to take self-inventory, time to look at the man in the mirror. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, who stands in the need of prayer. And we just simply confess to God and let God know that we agree um, that we've fallen short 
in some area of our, of our life, something we left undone that God told us to do and something that God told us not to do and that was the very thing we found ourselves doing. It's a time of repentance, but also it's a time of reconciliation where uh, as the people of God, we come together um, and as with all families, uh, we uh, love each other, but we don't always like each other. And sometimes we fall out simply because of attitudes or uh, actions. Um, but the key for the church is that when we come to this point, we, reconcile, we, we realize how much we have to reconcile those relationships simply because if God um, has forgiven us, who are we to hold the all against our brother or our sister? And listen, I know it hurt. I know it was tough. I know it was bad. I know they did you wrong. I know they was hating on you. But if God forgave you for some of the stuff you've done, come on, somebody help me. We got to learn how to forgive one another. And so it's a time of forgiveness. Everybody shout forgiveness. Mm, forgiveness. Um, it's a time of reconciliation, time of remembrance, time of repentance, time of reconciliation, but also a time of rejoicing. I'm, I'm appreciative of this choir that has led us to rejoice in the Lord. And I saw some of us, we were raving, waving our hands, we were clapping our hands and stomping our feet we were rejoicing in the lord simply because of what christ did for us on calvary and i just want to give you one second to just shout hallelujah i just want somebody to shout thank you jesus nobody but god what my mama what my daddy what my job what my finances what my fitness it was God. And I'm so grateful that, that to be in right relationship with God, that I can call on him and he answers prayer. So it's a time of rejoicing. And together, we want to pray and ask God to uh, bless this time as we reflect upon what he's done for us. Right where you are, let's pray. Gracious Father, how we love you. We're grateful because you have allowed us yet another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're grateful that last night was not our last night. That you woke us this morning, started us on our way. You've clothed us in our right mind, so much so that we're here today in this space, in this place to worship you. Now, God, we pray that you help us never to forget what you did for us on Calvary. It's because of what you did that we are in right relationship. It is because of what you did that we have eternal life. It's because of what you did that we have a new lease on life and we know that we're going in the right direction. It's because of what you did, dying on the cross for our sins, that our sins are forgiven. So we thank you, Lord. Now, God, we pray that you would forgive us of our sins. We've left some stuff undone, did what we shouldn't have done. But you are a forgiving God, and you proved that on Calvary when you died for us. Forgive us of our sins and throw our sins as far as the east is from the west and remember them no more. Then, oh God, we pray you help this church family body reconcile re broke relationships, strained uh, relationships, relationships that go way back, and yet, oh God, it goes even as far back as the cross, because you have brought us into the family of faith and told us to be brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and sons and daughters, and you told us to do community together, and oh God, we know that we cannot do it right and justice when there are strained relationships within the body. And we pray, even, oh God, that even as we leave this place today, that we will rush to our brother and sister and get things right so that we may be right with you. 
Now, God, we rejoice. We thank you because you are a good God and a gracious God. And we're not ashamed, not even in the sanctuary, but everywhere we go to shout hallelujah and say thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for holding us. Thank you for adjusting our attitude. Thank you for allowing us to be alive in this space today. We give your name praise. And it is that wonderful name that we pray. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And together, every child of God shouted amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, get your bread in your hand and we'll eat together. Um, we know that bread represents his broken body. And in fact, we know that his body was battered, bruised, and broken for us on Calvary. Brothers and sisters, let us eat together. And likewise, we know that the fruit of the vine represents Christ's shed blood. And the Bible declares that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Brothers and sisters, let us drink together. And together, every child of God said amen. 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 And amen. You got a song for me? Come on, let's give our attention to this choir one more time. Amen. time everybody at the cross at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there getting ready to sing one last song and uh, we're collecting our receptacles up here uh, pastor just got finished referencing uh, Jesus dying on the cross and so uh, we're in the season of resurrection and so what I try to do is I try to uh, just refresh my memory on the events um, that were surrounding uh, Jesus uh, death and his resurrection and so I was uh, perusing and I was looking at um, Matthew 27 and it uh, talked about how um, Judas felt remorse and tried to give the 30 pieces of silver back after, uh, after what happened, what transpired. And uh, he went ahead, and after that, he, uh, he went and killed himself. He committed suicide. Um, and then my mind got to rolling, and um, I thought that uh, maybe if Judas, if Peter would have got to Judas, he would have told him, hey, bro. God will give you another chance. I got to thinking that maybe um, if Daniel could have talked to Judas, he'd say, hey, God is faithful, and he will give you another chance. Uh, I want to submit that maybe if Jonah could have got to Judas, he would have said, hey, God will give you another chance. Um, and then I said, well, maybe if I was around in that time, I would have told Judas, listen, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel because God will give you another chance. And so if you just come to God and run to God with your problems and run to God with your situations and any of your remorse, look at somebody and encourage them that God will give you, he will give you another chance. If you believe that, will you clap your hands this morning?
Here we go, choir. I woke up this morning. Say that. I woke up this morning. Uh-huh. And I'm in my right mind. And I'm in my right mind. When I was asleep, didn't let no harm. When I was asleep, didn't let no harm come to me. He blesses me all the time. I had a little trouble. I had a little trouble, but God helped me. Uh-huh, that's it. I was down, he didn't let me stay. I was down, he didn't let me stay. That's it. When everything around me was going crazy. When everything around me was going crazy. I had peace the whole entire day. Say it. I had peace the whole day. This is what we're going to tell Judas. I don't need another reason. But just give me a chance. I know you have things. Maybe you're dealing something, but you got something that you're going through. You can trust me. But I've dealt with things too. too. Uh huh. Now this is it. When I stop and look around, say that. When I stop, sit down, look around. And I think about all the things he's brought me through. And I think about the things that brought me through. Y'all sound real good, choir. Let's go up. I have no right. My bad days seem few. Days I don't need another reason. Let's say it. To praise him. But just what? A chance. That's all we've been trying to say. I need another chance. Both my hands. There's breath in my body. There is breath in my body. Yeah, that's it. So that means. So that means I have a good idea. Oh, I don't need another reason to praise it. But just give me another chance. A chance to worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All I need is just another chance to lift my hands. Hold my hands. I need a chance to dwell with a royalty on bend and knees. To dwell with the king. There's breath in my body. Guess what? So that means so that means I have a good Don't need another reason. We're gonna do it one more time. Just give me a chance. Oh, a chance. Put your hands on that. He brought us this far not to leave us. He gave me another chance. Lift your hands. Another reason. Say that again. I don't need another reason to praise him. He gave me one. 
one more chance I don't need. Don't need, don't need Just give me a chance. Now, this is where you worship the Lord right here. Think about the many ways that he's brought you out. Think about the obstacles that he's brought you over. When your enemies were hot on your trail, he made your enemies leave you alone. He made your enemies your footstool. He said he'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. So this is a good time right here to give God praise. This is a good time to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He's holy. He's righteous. He's magnificent. He's holy. He's I'm not present. He's a sovereign God. He's the ruler of all things. He's the middle of the, he's the will in the middle of the will. He's my way out of no way. He's my righteousness. He's my peace. He's everything that I need. I said he's everything that I need. Is he your everything? If he your everything, worship him. Worship the Lord. Praise him. We may not have another chance, so we want to take advantage of this opportunity right here, right now, this very second. to triumph. Shout before your king. Shout before the Lord. Shout before the Lord. He's worthy.
It's all right to praise God. Amen. I think um, we thank God for our choir this morning. Come on. I believe you got to go to heaven to get something better than that. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Got breath in my body. So he's given me another chance. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, how we love you. Thank you. Thank you for this worship experience, lifting up your name. Certainly in honoring one of the ordinances that you told us. Certainly in lifting up your name in song. And we pray, oh God, that you pour back into this choir what they poured out on this day. We're grateful, oh God, for the sweet fellowship of the saints and your Holy Spirit. You are in this place. And we're grateful, O oh God, to feel your presence and that we might be able to worship with our brothers and sisters on this day. Now, God, it's preaching time. Stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. Touch, O oh God, these lips of clay that I may be able again to edify your people according to the power that works in me. And, O oh God, we pray you speak to the stillness of our hearts that we might know we've heard from on high. We'll be careful to give you all praise, all glory, all honor, which is already yours. And in that precious name of Jesus, we pray. And together, every child of God said, amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, if you don't mind, turn with me to Psalm 62. Uh, we've been preaching, not a series, but we've just been preaching out of the book of Psalms. And... Um, we may have one more, if the Lord says the same, then we'll be marching toward the resurrection. But um, today, we'll, we'll stop at Psalm 62. If you're able to stand, let's stand together. And this is the word of the Lord. To the choir, Master, according to Jethun, Jeduthun, a psalm of David. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall and a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, the psalmist says, oh, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock. My refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath, and those of high estate are a delusion. In the balance, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. But no trust in extortion, set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you will render to man according to his work. 
I want to put a tag on this text and talk about in this season where we're dealing with challenges, I want to talk about God alone. God alone. You may be seated in the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, no person pursued or possession should ever take preeminence over God. God alone must be the believer's trust. And as David wrote this psalm, he declared that in the midst of his trouble, he was not looking to anyone or anything other than to God and God alone. The truth of the matter is, beloved, in the opening verses, the key word is alone. Everybody shout alone. It's a word that occurs four times in this text as it relates to God, verse 1, verse 2, verse 5, and verse 6. And David stated that his faith rested solely in God, the singular object of his trust, God alone. And this solitary reliance upon God was the firm foundation for David's life. He trusted God. And listen, beloved, concerning the background of this text, some suggest that David was surrounded by evil conspirators who wanted to dethrone him. Perhaps the setting of this serene psalm is uh, settled in uh, the, in the uh, uh, treason that he faced with Absalom, his son. Or perhaps, beloved, it could have been right in the middle of Saul's jealous rage. But whatever the circumstance, beloved, David committed himself to God, placing his trust in God, the God whom he declares in this text, the God of his salvation. The message of this psalm is clear, and hear it right up front, beloved, it is this. No matter how difficult the trial, trust in God alone. Listen, you can tweet that, put it on social media, you can put it on Facebook Live. Listen, in the midst of trials, trouble, tribulation, in the midst of difficulties and dilemmas, in the midst of suffering and uh, all kind of calamities that might come our way, here is the operative statement right up front. Trust God alone alone. Is that all right to say this morning? I know, I know we got a lot of stuff we trust in, but listen, whatever it is that we are dealing with, going through, whatever the happenstance, we must learn how to trust God alone. And that is the title of this text today, uh, God alone. God alone, not God and something else. God and God all by himself. Just nudge somebody and say, wake up, you need to hear this. Go ahead, help somebody early, right now. Just tell them, nudge them real quick and say, trust God alone. <laughs> Look at somebody else, you done looked at the wrong person. They done got <laughs> sadiddy on you. <laughs> and say, God alone. God alone. Again, David writes this song. Bible declares in the, cap, the, uh, the opening caption for J Jaduthun, who apparently again was the music director or the choir director, and this was a song that was to be sung in the worship experience of the children of Israel. First of all, that if we're going to see God alone in the text, we got to see, beloved, right up front, David's trust. Everybody shout trust. That's verses 1 and verse 2 by, again, David begins by reaffirming to his own soul who God is. He says in verse 1, for God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. The word soul there in the Hebrew refers to one's entire being, one's whole inner self, encompassing the mind, the emotion, and the will. And therefore, David is suggesting that his entire inner person or his whole heart found rest 
in God. This particular word for God is Elohim. Everybody shout Elohim. It is the plural in the plural form indicating a plenitude of power, majesty, and dominion. And David vowed to trust God who he said was his salvation, meaning that God alone was the only one who could deliver him from his circumstance, who, or the only one who could deliver him from all harm, hurt, and danger. Elohim, God alone, can do this. And this word alone, ak, in the Hebrew is used with a fourfold intention, intentional repetition. God alone in verse one, God alone in verse two, God alone or God only in verse five and six. It is there to underscore, hear me beloved, the exclusivity, hear me, the exclusivity of David's reliance on God and his trust in God. He says exclusively, I am relying on God and exclusively I'm trusting in God alone. And listen, beloved, as Christians, our problem is not that we do not trust God, for we have to trust God, listen, beloved, uh, as a least, uh, in, as a means of salvation. But, 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 we, but the truth is, to become uh, a good Christian, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we, we, we recognize the problem is that we don't trust God alone. We trust God in other stuff. We trust God in our money. We trust God in our fitness. We trust God in our finances. We trust God in how good we look. I wish somebody would help me, but all of us in here today know that all of that stuff soon will pass away. Our trust must be in God and God alone. Help me preach this right up front. Look at somebody and say, you look good now. Come on, somebody help help me. Dress good. Got it going on. Listen, I know you got money in the bank. You got friends everywhere, but somebody knows sooner or later all that's going to pass away and you're going to have to have a trust in something that's bigger than you and better than you that's got more power than you. Is somebody listening to me right now? Trust God alone. Problem is not that we don't trust him, we just don't trust him alone. We always add something else to trust. And here David gives the big idea right up front from the gate. He says, I am at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. Hear me, beloved. I know it's difficulty to trust God when dangers lurk, yet David chose to trust God. God. And while he also refused to take matters into his own hands, he was waiting on God to intervene. He was waiting on God to make a move. He was waiting on God to step out. He was waiting on a voice from the Lord to tell him to do this or to do that. He was waiting on God to intervene. Are you listening to me? And the truth of the matter is, beloved, in verse 2, the psalmist's trust is well placed. He says, he says, God alone was his rock and his salvation again. That even though David's world was topsy-turvy, his hour was dark, his circumstances were difficult, he was sustained by God who was rock solid. Everybody shout, God is rock solid. And God is immovable. We can't move God. That God is, uh, was steady and secure. And David recognized that if he was in a, going to be in a place of security, it had to be with a trust in God alone. That, that, that David goes on to reaffirm that God was his salvation. He says in verse 2 that he also is my fortress everybody shout fortress. Fortress means high place. It means a refuge set high up. And although he had reason to fear, he wrote with quiet confidence and resting resolve, 
I shall not be greatly shaken. I hope y'all see that. He, he wrote it. It's in the text. I don't want you to think I'm making this up. He said, with resting resolve and quiet confidence that whatever comes in my life, I shall not be greatly shaken. And listen, beloved, I can take solace in the fact that he used the word greatly. He didn't say, I won't be shaken. He said that I'm just not going to shake much. Are y'all with me? I, I won't be greatly shaken. I'm not going to be moved from where I am greatly from trusting in God and God alone. Let me ask you this. What's shaking you? Is it a financial pitfall or a strained economy? Is it a rocky relationship with your children whom you raised to fear God and they act as if God don't even exist? Are you shivering over the status of your health report or the condition of our society in this upcoming election causing you tremors of trouble because you, you see what a lot of people ain't seeing that if 45 get back in the White House the whole world is going to erupt in chaos? Is that shaking you? What What's shaking you right now? And listen, beloved, whatever it is, we can be like David, that in the times of mounting difficulty, the psalmist's faith still rose higher. He knew that he was safe in God's care. And so David's trust, beloved, was this. God alone was his rest. God alone was his rescue. God alone was his rock, and God alone was his refuge. And listen, beloved, somebody peeped it like this, that when God is all you got, then you find out that God is all you need. Am I talking to anybody in here? Folk walked out on you, but God stayed with you. Folk turned their back on you, but God was right there in the midst. And listen, when you recognize that God is all you got, listen, beloved, you also recognize that God is all you need. I know I got some witnesses in this house that's not ashamed to say, listen, when everybody turned their back on me, when everybody walked out on me, when everybody thought bad, to me God was the one constant and the steady source and he stayed right there just look at somebody and say go on with your bad self God ain't going nowhere you can leave me but God ain't walking out on me Y'all hear me? And in verse 3 and 4, we see what was shaking David. Verse 3, he addresses the assailants. David asks a rhetorical question. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him? In other words, how long will you assault a man? How long will you assail a man with violence and calamity? And the truth is, the man to whom he was referring to was himself. He accused his attackers of trying to throw him down. And the text says, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. These two metaphors show how David saw himself in a weakened state ready to fall. And I get it, beloved. Been there, done that, bought a t-shirt and handed it out to all my relatives. And I know I ain't the only one in here because, listen, a whole lot of us have felt abused and battered so down that we don't know, think from day to day that we're going to make it. We've been down so long that down don't bother us. Teeter, tottering, up one minute and down the next. And life has us leaning, leaning in pain and discomfort, leaning in chaos and confusion, leaning in misunderstanding, leaning in hurt feelings, wondering how someone could treat another human being like that, like my big mama said, I wouldn't even treat a dog like that. But David ain't done. He says in verse 4, 
The only plan to thrust them down from his high position. They take pleasure in his falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. You see, these conspirators intended to topple David from his lofty place. In other words, beloved, uh, uh, it, it was, they wanted to take him off his high horse. He, he was probably referring to an attempt to coup to remove him from the royal throne. The people who plotted, the Bible declares, uh, to do so, those around him, they were posers. You do know what a poser is, don't you? A poser, I'm glad you, somebody said no. A poser <laughs> is folk who act like they're your friend, act like they're your homie, act like that this is, I'm one of your boys. I wish somebody would help me. A act like that you'll ride or die, but, but, but uh, underneath they're conniving and trying to stab you in the back. They patting you on the back to see where to stick the knife. Am I talking to anybody? A, a poser. They were acting like friends. And I know, I ain't got to tell you, y'all know some posers. Amen. And if you got posers in your life, you need to weed them out of your life. You only need people in your life that's going to lift you up. You need people on your life that's genuine and authentic and people of integrity that's going to hold you up in hard times and not pull you down. Listen, look at somebody. Don't just nudge them. Don't, don't just look at me and say, I don't want any posers in my life. I don't want to work with them. I don't want to go to church with them. I don't want, I don't want to live. I don't want posers around me acting like they my friend. And that's what was going on in David's life. These posers were acting like uh, they, was, they was his friend. And, um, and listen, beloved, uh, the truth of the matter is uh, uh, with their mouth, uh, they uh, blessed and praised him, but with their heart, they were cursing him and plotting evil plans against him. Their slanderous lies threatened to turn the tide of public opinion Watch this, against David and undermine his leadership. But David was in a tough spot. Everybody said a tough spot. Uh, he was in a bad place. As I say all the time, he was between the devil and the deep blue sea. He was between a rock and a hard place. And yet, David says, I got quiet, confident, trust in God. Trust in God alone. Listen, beloved, that, that is the word for today. Take that with you. Write it down. Put it on, on Twitter or X or whatever you call it. Trust God alone. That's David there, but we see his trust, but watch his testimony. Listen, I love a testimony. Not a testimony. <laughs> Not a testify. A real, genuine testimony. And you can tell a real, genuine testimony because the person starts out by talking about God, but ends up talking about themselves. But I love a genuine testimony, and that's what we see in David. In verses 5 and 8, he reaffirms verses 1 and 2 by declaring again his confident trust in God. Verse 5, he says, For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. In other words, he re-instructed his heart, hear me, beloved, to find rest in God alone by repeating the opening refrain he calls upon himself to have faith in God, a reliance that was full of hope. Everybody shout hope. That Hebrew word for hope there uh, means to eagerly, uh, waiting eagerly upon God, looking forward to God's divine intervention. I'm hoping in God that, that he going to move and act and intervene in my life. Are you listening to me now? Apparently it was David's tendency to try to take things into his own hands hastily or recklessly or impetuously trying to, trying to tough things out and make ways out of his own way. But he understood that in verse 6 that God alone was his rock, his salvation, his fortress, and that only God could protect him and defend him. He, he, he says, God 
well, is my soul deliverer. He says it again with more grit because in verse 2, he says, I shall not be greatly moved. But when you get to verse 6, he, he says, I shall not be moved. He says, listen, in verse 2, I shall not be greatly moved. That there is, there is a movement, but, but, but I'm still standing strong. But when you get to verse 6, there's a progression here. He doesn't say, I shall not be greatly moved. He says, I shall not be moved. Now, I hope you see the progression here because it looks as if the more he thought about God, the stronger he got. The more that he focused on the problem solver instead of the problem, uh, listen, beloved, the bolder he was in his declaration and determination not to be moved in his trust from God. It, it, he began to think about God and the goodness of God and how God moves and operates. And he says uh, more intently and more determinedly that I shall not be moved. I shall not be shaken. And listen, beloved, I don't know about you. Uh, I'm like the songwriter. You can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. Do I got any witnesses in the house that you know too much about God? That ain't time to be doubting God. It's time to be trusting God. You know too much about God, that God makes ways out of no way. And it ain't time to try to figure out a way because you know that God has already made a way. I, am I talking to anybody? You know too much about God. Somebody knows that he is a doctor in a sick room. And when, the, when everybody else, including the doctor and your head doctor and your, 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 your other doctors, they come together and they decide that uh, this is what the outcome's going to be, you know that you serve the great physician and he has the last say so you can't make me doubt God right now I, I've been on this road long enough right now that I'm, I'm past elementary trust in God I've come to a place in my life where listen I ain't doubting God as much as I used to because the same God that brought me through it in the past is the same God that can bring me through right now. Look at somebody and say, you can't make me doubt him. Come on, look at somebody else. Say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much woo, about him. He's a way maker. He's a healer. He's a divine giver. He, he loves us and looks beyond our faults and sees our very need. That's my testimony. That the more I know about God and the more I learn of God's ways, are you listening to me? The more I fully understand that I'm determined to follow and trust him, the more I'm determined to serve him. Are you listening to me? The more I want to declare, I shall not be shaken. Are y'all hearing me? It's like Uncle Oscar, who was apprehensive about his first airplane ride. His friends were eager to hear how it went. And he asked if he enjoyed the flight. Well, Uncle Oscar was sent, said, I'm just kidding. Uh, Uncle Oscar said, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be, but I can tell you this, I never did put all my weight down. 
Can I tell you this? I've learned that on Christ, you can put all your weight down. Is that all right to say? Watch what David continues to say about God. Verse 7, God, rest. In verse 7, say, oh, on God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. The word glory is translated honor. Everybody shout honor. honor. Which means that David trusted in God alone to uphold his honor. He says that he's my deliverer, my rock, mighty rock, my powerful rock. He is unmovable when everything else is shaking around me. I look up and know that God is not shaking. He's my refuge. I ain't shaking, and since I'm in him, listen, beloved, then I ain't shaking. He ain't shaking, and since I'm in him, I'm not shaking. Can I say that again? Listen, I, I, I hope somebody gets this real quick. Listen, God is not shaking. He's a strong foundation. Listen, beloved, and because I'm in him, him because he's not shaking I'm not shaking am I talking to anybody today that that's why you don't have to shake through whatever you're going through you don't have to teeter totter because if you are in Christ you better recognize he's a firm foundation and when he doesn't shake you better recognize you ain't shaking because you are in him somebody ought to shout amen Come what may, whatever be tied, God will take care of us. And listen, David apparently uh, did not want to be alone in this testimony. He wanted somebody to second his motion. He wanted somebody to agree with his thesis, so he invited others to share uh, in his confident faith in God. Verse 8, he says, trust in him at all times, O oh, you people. Y'all see that in the text? Listen, beloved, and it says, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. The word trust there in the Hebrew means to attach to, uh, oneself to another self. It means, to, it means to attach yourself to something that's firm. Are you listening to me? It, it is a trust. It, David says, you, you better attach yourself to God. That's what he says. At all times, especially in times like this. That, that's a word for today. I, I wish I could just go down the road and tell you the kind of times that we are in and we need to learn to trust God at all times, especially in times like these. These are tough times and rough times and challenging times where our society is literally going to hell in a handbasket. And the truth of the matter is we better attach ourselves to someone who is greater than we are. Are you listening to me? And then he says, as a parallel alternative expression for trust, David exclaims to the people, pour out your hearts to him. Th this was a reference to earnest prayer. Hear me, beloved, a clarion call to unburden oneself to God who alone is our refuge. And listen, beloved, true faith express itself in fervent prayer. That if there's something going on in life, we need to pour out our hearts to God about it. Is that all right to say? True faith expresses itself in fervent prayer. True faith casts all of its cares upon God because God cares for us. And James said it like this, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Listen, beloved, the truth, and let me ask you this, when is the last time you poured your heart out to God? And I hear somebody saying, well, what does it mean to pour out my heart to God? And the truth of the matter is, beloved, it means to allow our hearts to flow out fully and freely. Listen, to God in prayer. Are you hearing me? It means to express our true self in openness and vulnerability to God. To where I can't be vulnerable to you because you talk too much. I can't talk to you because you gossip. You cloak it and stuff like, 
Lord, we just need to pray for the pastor. I'm just, Lord. That's how we say, Lord, let me just pray for John. Let me just pray for such. And, and we cloak it by, God, come on, somebody help me. But how many of you all know that we can be vulnerable to God and God has our best intention in mind every time? Are you listening to me? Have you ever had to sit down and dump all your troubles on someone and then found out that they weren't really listening to you? That, that's why I love God. Everybody say, I love God. Love God, love God, love God, love God. Because with God, we can pour out our hearts freely and fully. We can be open and vulnerable before God. And that means, beloved, uh, that uh, we can tell God anything and everything. And God is not only hearing, he's listening. Here's the caveat. And he still loves me. I can be honest with God. Woo! And God still loves me. See, if I'm honest a lot with you, you're going you to look at me cross-eyed. If I'm honest with you, you're going to look at me sideways. You're going to cock that one eye. I wish somebody would help me. And you're going to say, here he come. But when we honest with God, whoo, somebody shout, God still loves me. And that's a word for somebody today. Folk may not like you, but God loves you. Folk may not agree with you, but God loves you. Folk may not be on your team, but God loves you. Are y'all hearing me? And the truth of the matter is, beloved, there's nothing we can't talk to God about. Are you having a hard time coping? Are you sift? Are you are you are you are you uh, uh, teeter and tottering uh, uh, and struggling with what's going on in life? Tell God about it and leave no stone unturned. Pour out literally means to spill forth. I can tell God what is on my heart. It describes something gushing out or going forth. It's the ideal of someone talking to another, and as they do, they open their hearts and just freely pour out their heart and soul to them. That's what David is talking about. Pour out your heart, O oh ye people. I like that because I'm reminded of a story of a 31-year-old unemployed painter and decorator who snuck into, hear me, beloved, the uh, Buckingham Palace so that uh, he just, he, he got in there by shimming up a drain pipe, got into the, uh, into the palace, uh, found the queen's room, and uh, the queen tried to call for help, but the truth is nobody came. So uh, he, he sat down at the queen's bed. She had uh, curler rollers in her hair, and, and, and it is said that all she, he wanted to do was to tell the queen about his family trouble. I, I like that. I like that, beloved, because as believers, we got an opportunity to get with royalty. It's not the queen of England, but it is the king of kings. I wish somebody would help me. The truth of the matter is, all we got to do is get a, uh, have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry, and he'll answer by and by. Are you listening to me? Now, when you feel a little prayer will turn, and then you'll know a little fire is burning. Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Is that all right to say? Let me give you the bones of this last point. Here it is. One, we see David's trust. We see David's testimony. And then lastly, we see David's truth. He is, that's verses 9 and 12. He concludes by contrasting the weakness of man with the power of God. Those of low estate, he says in verse 9, are but a breath. Those of high estate are but a delusion. In the balance, they go up 
They are together lighter than the breath. David here has unwaver an unwavering testimony to trust in God and not in man. The low estate are the low-born men, meaning those are of low rank, are of low social status, as well as the high estate men, those born to privilege and power and prestige, those born with a silver spoon in their mouth. David says both are but a breath, literally meaning they are futile, they're empty, they're a lie, they're delusional, meaning that they're only fooling themselves. The polar opposites represent those who are not anchored in God's holy truth. He says, you weigh them on a scale and they are lighter than a breath. He says, he says, listen, they're literally a vapor, a, a puff of smoke. They amount to not much. In other words, they are helplessly fooling themselves because they cannot get themselves out of trouble. He goes another further and says, put no trust in extortion, set no vain hopes on robbery if riches increase, set not your heart on them. In other words, mortal man must not trust in his own devices such as extortion and stolen goods or riches. All of these things will surely fail. Then in contrast to mortal man, he says God alone can be trusted. Watch verse 11. Once God has spoken twice, I have heard this. In other words, God spoken once but a second time he spoke directly to David and please note beloved that speaking to God is the value of waiting on God alone that when God speaks when we wait on him and don't worry don't fret don't lose hope God will give you answer for your trouble are you listening to me he, he says he says this is the word that I got from God and that Power belongs to God. Hear me, beloved. That word power means strength, a might. That strength and power is revealed in God's mighty deeds toward his people. That man's deliverance, hear me, will ultimately be in God because ultimately real power and real strength belongs to God and God alone. There is false strength out there, but real power power and real strength belongs to God alone. They think money is strength and relationships are strength, but real strength and power belongs to God. And then as a direct prayer in verse 12, listen, God, uh, to God, David declares that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. Hear me, beloved, when I tell you this, the, the, the psalmist is saying God is strong and God is loving. He is all powerful and full of mercy and that he is able to deliver his people who trust in him. And he is willing to take into account their best interest and their highest good. And he qualifies it by saying, for you will render to man according to his works. That, that, that is that God unquestionably will reward each person who trusts in him. Somebody ought to shout amen. He'll reward us according to the works that we've done in our body and here it is. The believer must trust in God who, who, who will re be rewarded by God. We got to trust God to stay on the battlefield so that we know that in the end God is going to reward us. It is futile to initiate our own deliverance. We we must wait patiently and wait for God to intervene and wait for God to act. It reminds me of this little boy when it comes to waiting, of a boy standing at the end of the escalator and the woman said, young man, are you lost? And he said, no, I'm not lost. I'm just waiting for my gum to come back. Listen, beloved, listen, can I tell you this? We got to wait on the Lord. Wait until our change come. We got to wait, my brothers and sisters, until God gets ready to move. When we fear and worry and 
anxiety and panic comes to the believer's heart, we must remember that God is strong and that he is loving toward us. And these two divine attributes are the twin towers of every believer's trust in God, that God got all power and that God has steadfast love because God is strong and all power belongs to him. He is over all the events of history, even our lives, and thus he is able to deliver every believer out of their troubles. We must rest assured that nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible for God. Listen, beloved, likewise, God is loving and merciful, and to him belongs steadfast love. Hear me, beloved, steadfast love. He's a kind king who uses his omnipotence and infinite tenderness, uh, coming to the aid of his people in their darkest hour. Hear me, beloved. Believers can be confident calling out to God for help. We ain't got to pour out our heart to God knowing that he loves us perfectly and that his power he'll use wisely when we are attacked and in danger. So hold on, old soldier. I hear you saying, I'm going to hold on until my change come. Listen, beloved, we got to hold on until God gets ready to move. Are you listening to me? Listen, beloved, it's time to trust God and trust God alone so that we can stop being unsure, stop being unsettled, stop being anxious and worrying and teeter-tottering. We need to stop leaning and stop procrastinating and stop delaying and deferring. We got to stop holding back and stop being petty and trivial. We got to stop being insecure and apprehensive. We got to stop we got to trust in God so that we can stop being nervous and uneasy and fearful. Can I say it again? It's time to trust God alone so that we can stop being mean and stop being nasty and stop being unkind and harsh and a hater. Listen, beloved, we got to stop looking down and stop looking around and look up from whence cometh our help. Is somebody hearing me? It's time to fix uh, our face on God, steady the ship, secure, be secure in Christ, dependent on the Holy Spirit, and be bold in our proclamation. It's time to be faithful. It's time to be sure. It's time to be settled. It's time to be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. Just help me preach this, close this out. Look at somebody and say, it's time to trust God alone. I'm going to keep on working. Woo! While it is day, for the night comes when no man can work. Hold on, oh soul. God is coming through. Hold on, oh soldier. God will make a way for you. I'm done. I didn't keep you too long. I'm done. Let's stand. God alone. God alone. God will make a way for us. That David declaration says, I'm going to trust God alone. Listen, beloved, uh, we got some witnesses in the house today that can testify that when we trusted in other things, they let us down, they fooled us, they talked about us. But when we put our trust in God, whoo, somebody help me real here. 
We can testify God made a way out of no way. God is steady and sure. God is our refuge and our strength. Everything else is rocky. Somebody needs to know you can hold on to God. And if you can't hold on to him, you'll find out he's holding on to you. Is that all right to say? Listen, if you're here today, you don't know God for yourself. You never invited Christ into your life. Listen, it is God and God alone. It is only through what Christ did for us on Calvary, dying on Calvary's cross, that we might have the right to the tree of life. The Bible declares that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart God raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. So if you're here today, never said yes to the Lord, I'm extending the invitation to you to come to Christ. I, I want to encourage you to run to the cross. Because if you run to the cross, you'll find joy there. You'll find love there. You'll find divine uh, intervention. You will find eternal security if you just run to the cross. You'll find your way. You'll find peace. You'll find joy. So if you're here today and uh, you never said yes to the Lord and you want to know more about this God alone, I'm extending the invitation to you to walk down that aisle. Give your hand to these counselors, but give your heart to God. Secondly, if you're here... You say, Pastor, I know the Lord, but I need a church home. Every believer needs a place to call home. And listen, beloved, today your search can end. You might find the church just as good as the St. Paul Church of Sacramento, but you ain't going to find one any better. I wish somebody would say amen right there. This is a good place to call home. This is a good place to land. This is a good place to grow. This is a good place to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. So if you're here and you say, I, I need a church home, I'm asking you to slide out of that aisle, give your hand to these counselors, give your heart to God. Is there one today to say yes to the Lord? Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Is there one? Do I see you coming? I see you coming. Is there another to say yes to the Lord? Is there another to say yes? Come on. The Lord is speaking to you right now. Is there another to say yes? You need a place to call home. You need a church home. Lead me. Guide me along the way. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. God's talking to you right now. One to say yes, is there another? Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. The Lord is moving on you right now. Each day. I see you coming. I see you, mother. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Is there another? Lead me, oh Lord. Lead me. Let the Lord lead you today. Come on. God is calling you. Is there another to say yes? God wants to do a new thing in your life. He wants to help you to trust. Help you to lean on him. Is there another to say yes? Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. God is speaking. Listen, why don't you do me a favor? Just turn to the person next to you and say, listen, if you wanted to walk down there but didn't want to walk alone, I'll walk with you. Is there one? Just look to the person to the right or to the left and say, if you wanted to walk, I'll walk with you. And I'll walk. Come on, just, just look at somebody. It's all right. Just, just check with them. Just check with them. Just check with them. Just check with them. See if they wanted to walk, but they just didn't have the courage to walk by themselves. Is there one? Saints are praying. Come on. Is there one? Oh, bless his name. I see you coming. I see you coming.
One more time. One more time. Come on, choir. Oh, everybody, help me sing it. Lead me. Lead me. Guide me. You still got time. Boy. Every day, oh, 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 Honor God in your giving. We know that we cannot outgive God. And I want to again thank everyone who has been faithful in their giving. Also, uh, on the um, screen should be a um, should be a QR code. It's there. And you can give by way of your phone and QR or other ways to give. But if you want to give, I, I want you to uh, be faithful in your giving on the way out. We got an announcement. Amen. Come on. Good morning, St. Paul. Uh, I'm Minister Brandon, and uh, I am the worship and arts minister. And I want to introduce you uh, to, I call them my trinity of uh, youth and children's leaders. They are leaders of uh, the choir, the St. Paul Kids, K-I-D-Z. There you go. Uh, they're going to be giving us some, some special instructions with some special announcements. Can you praise God for them, please? Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. All right. Please raise your hand if you, your child, grandchild or great-grandchild were ever in the Little Workers Guild. Oh, well, let you look at here. All right, thank you very much. To this day, we are reaping the harvest of seeds planted by the Little Workers Guild Foundational Teachings and Disciplines. The Little Workers Guild was organized in 1963 under the late Pastor Dr. Albert L. Timms with many faithful volunteers down through the years from the late Sister Betty Wyndham to the last and longest serving advisors, the late Sister Helen Van and Sister Evelyn Kennedy. Thank you for your service, ma'am. All, uh, well, amen. So all Little Workers Guild participants were exposed to the following. Stage presence, public speaking, acting, the importance of memorization, Bible lessons to understand the supporting scripture text of a song, different styles of Christian songs and spirituals, church etiquette, personal hygiene, coming, come looking good and smelling good. Okay, you remember. <laughs> Choir decorum, vocal and ear training, participation in worship service regularly, get this, Tom Thumb Weddings. Okay, Google that when you get home, not now. So that Tom Thumb Weddings planted the seed of God's ordinance of marriage. Various programs and anniversaries, witnessing workshops, yes, choir members need to know the plan of salvation, and outreach. So all of these facets were important to molding a strong Christian character in our four to 12 year olds and are still needed. In recent years, the Little Workers Guild pivoted to accommodate the pan pandemic by creating song videos, a virtual, a virtual Christmas plays as well as staying connected on our Saturday morning prayer calls. St. Paul Kids Choir has the objective of teaching God's attributes and faithfulness, as well as being vessels to help the congregation 
experience God through music. Additionally, research indicates that musical enhancements for children helps build self-esteem, increases public speaking skills, is positively correlated with earning higher grades, is a therapeutic activity, and is transformative for positive change. As we begin to reimagine our children's ministry amidst our new normal, we are excited about our continued work with the children during Children's Church and to edify their Christian walk via song and music, as well as ministering on a special occasions. Amen. After our worship, worship service today, we will be in the vestibule at the welcome booth receiving sign-up information from parents and guardians of children, again, ages 4 to 12, and answering any questions that you may have. Uh, you've seen the rehearsal schedule that was uh, on the announcements earlier this morning. I'll go ahead and just reiterate them. Uh, they're going to be tomorrow. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Tuesday, March the 5th, it's going to be a virtual rehearsal on Zoom. So when you go to sign up, please make sure that you put your email address on the sign-in form. That is how we will communicate with you the Zoom link for on Tuesday. Um, and then the additional rehearsal will be next Sunday. That is March the 10th. It's going to be during the worship service. Uh, so that way you can enjoy uh, Jesus and, and we'll have some something to do for the children as well. And then the, the final rehearsal is on Thursday, March the 14th at 6 15 p.m. right here in the sanctuary so everybody put your three fingers up you got three opportunities how many opportunities three. three opportunities to join with us on the 76th church anniversary on March the 17th bless God amen. let the church say amen let's stand real quickly though I want to remind you that on March 9th or uh, at 9 30 a.m. Uh, our women will, um, will come together to create their own prayer vision board. So if you're a woman uh, and uh, you want to be involved in women's ministry, be there. Uh, Erica Houston, our sister from City Church, will be the facilitator. It's a $10 uh, donation requested for, uh, I think, some of the um, materials and all of that. Be there. Amen. The men had a hundred. 150 men the other day. And I know y'all can, can beat that. So let's be there. Remember our church anniversary, March 17th, Dr. Horatio Jones will be our, our uh, guest speaker and come to stay the whole day. We're going to have refreshments and children's fun zone. We're going to have Facebook Live. We're going to have a photo booth and activities. We want to celebrate our uh, church anniversary, 76 years. Amen. And two or uh, three other things real quick. Uh, last Tuesday during City Council Black History Month recognition, Councilman Rick Jennings received a resolution from the mayor of our city. Is he in the house today? Brother Rick, amen. And we acknowledge his dedication and achievement in the city of Sacramento and even on the football field as an Oakland Raider. And then last Monday, in honor of uh, Black History Month, Sen Senator Angela Ashby recognized Flossie Crump during the Senate Black History Month celebration. Wave your hand, Sister Crump. She's one of the first black women to be a patrol officer here in the city of Sacramento. That's a, that's a bad mama jamma right there. And then don't forget to tune in on Black Mafia Family. Uh, Quincy is going to be on. Uh, you might recognize her. I don't know what she's going to be doing, but it's Black Mafia Family. So, uh, uh, amen. But she's a star, amen. <laughs> She sings and acts, and uh, she is a member of St. Paul Church. Come on, let's give God some praise. Who closing me out? Brother Dawson, come on. I'm sorry. I done talked too long, preached too long. It's time to go. Amen. Listen, everybody shout, God alone.
Give God a hand, praise for the singing choir. And we want to praise God for the preached word. Bless the Lord. Him alone. Him alone. Amen. Let us bow. May the grace of God bless us and keep us. May we leave this place, Lord, but never your presence. May grace and peace follow us everywhere we go, Lord, till we meet again. Just pray in Jesus' name we pray. Church says, Amen.